So again, if we don't want to worry about phases in AC, let's just consider the amplitudes. So if we go back, our current in the AC driven inductor was equal to minus delta V max over omega L cosine omega T. And that's just a simple sinusoid. So this is I max. I max is, and the negative sign also really is just a phase issue. So the maximum or the amplitude of the current oscillation is delta V max times omega L. So if we equate those and bring the omega L over, you find delta V, its amplitude, is equal to omega L times the current amplitude. So again, this is like an AC resistance, because this looks like Ohm's law. And if you work it out, it actually comes out in ohms, omega times L, the frequency, natural frequency, times the inductance of the inductor. So we define <coughs> the um, inductive reactance. To be XL equals omega L. So like the capacitor, we can now think about it physically. If you're at really low um, frequencies, then uh, if you're at really low frequencies, your current that you're, you establish may be changing and making a B field and making a B field that changes and causing induction. But if the frequency is low, it's not doing it very fast. So it doesn't cause much induction. So that's why this doesn't have a lot of resistance or a lot of reactance to the circuit. If your frequency is really high, then the B field is changing fast more induction, more back EMF, uh, and a bigger effect. That's why the inductive reactance is linear with frequency. It's the opposite of the capacitor. So we have three elements. Resistor doesn't care about frequency. The capacitor is inverse with frequency. And the uh, inductor is linear with frequency.